everyone. I hope my camera doesn't fall off there on my um, windowsill thing. Yes, Velar video, Ranger of Velar. Um, this is going to be a kind of six month ownership review. Um, I have been thinking about doing one of these and I did a poll on my Instagram again just to see if people wanted to see it um, and it did pretty well. Uh, so everyone kind of about 30, 40 people said yeah, I really want to see it. Yeah. Six months ownership review video on this car. Now don't expect kind of journalism talk or kind of Henry Catchpole sayings or stuff like that um, like with power to rate ratios and stuff like this. Well. I will take as much inspiration as I can from him anyway because I do love his videos and I do like he's one of my favourite car journalists anyway. This is kind of like a normal person buying a car and six months review because all these kind of car journalists or YouTube channels that kind of review cars they get the car for a day or even only like two hours and they they have to rush a video and talk about it as much as they can. You know they only do the review based on that two hours of driving or, or a day of driving and a day of being with the car. Um, this is an ownership review so this is different. Um, you know man ain't going round McAdee's drive through uh, and curbing your wheels. Men ain't going down shops to buy milk and then coming back. So yeah, six months ownership review. Uh, the, the points I'll touch on here is kind of practicality with the car, um, the space and everything, and the infotainment. I think the majority of this video is going to be talking about the infotainment here um, because kind of sitting on the fence with this infotainment in the Villa, but I'll get onto that sooner in the video. Yes, picked it up in September. Um, September last year, 2018, on the 1st September, so I've got the new reg, um, but I've put my private plate on now. And yeah, I did a car collection video where I went to the dealership, picked up the car, did all that stuff that car YouTubers do. Um, and it did quite well, I got like 42,000 views I think it's on now, so I'm going to continue to make these kind of car videos, I think people are interested in them. And, well mainly, I've only made like 3 or 4 car videos and they seem to be kind of the highest mid-range views <laughs> on my channel. Um, so, looking forward to making more of these videos on kind of cars and stuff like that or whatever I buy and I made a spec video so literally I talked through the whole car uh, of what I spec and everything what was on the options list um, so that was really in-depth actually it was about 20 minutes long let me take the camera and let's walk around the car and just give you a brief kind of description on, on, on the spec because not many people go back to watch that video for 20 minutes and then come back here so we're gonna get out and walk around the car cool here we are then so as you can see i pulled into some random kind of it's not even a park it's just like a lay-by thing with trees i'm gonna kind of do like a shmi style video here i've turned the mic around so you can actually hear me properly so it's not facing that way this is actually facing my voice um okay so spec of the car indus silver is a metallic paint here it is metallic you can only spec metallic paint if you spend 700 pounds the other options are black or white and they're a non-cost option wheels i really if you're going to go for one of these cars and if you pick silver or like well, I think these wheels go for anything really on, on the Velar. Do, if you've got the spare cash to put the options on, these wheels are definitely recommended. They, they look sick, they look awesome. They're 22 inch diamond cut alloys, the two tone with the silver, like the matte gray. Pirelli tires, 265, 40, R22, sick wheels. They're, I mean, they just set off the car really nicely. If you come back in, look at that. Definitely with the silver and the black um, two tone roof as well which has got the panoramic roof up there, as you can see. So yeah, silver, black, and then like the two-tone silvery gray wheels, which really, really set the car off nice. I just think these cars look sick. I do really like the shape. So nice from like the three-quarter angle. As we go around the back, you can see my private plates on there. W8 FST, which is normally mistaken for fast. Um, that's why on the RS3 it looks a bit stupid because I've just put that on because I think it's a fast car. But anyhow, I think I'm about getting a new one anyway. Um, but soon come. Yeah, so Velar D240 SE. So that means it's the SE spec. So what you get with that is basically half leather Alcantara inside. You get all the sat nav infotainment and stuff like that in there. You get uh, cruise control. You get the Meridian sound system, which is upgraded. It's not the signature sound system, which is like three grand. Um, you get this one standard, which is like the second tier up from the basic one. So that's good. And with the SE, as I said, you get leather and Alcantara here. Well, it's like suede. It's really, really nice kind of material. Um, with this, you get these nice little patterns in here, as you can see. Um, and if you go HSE, this is just plain with like one line of stitching. So I kept it SE because I do like this pattern on there. Um, this was an extra satin ash on there. SE, you get eight way or ten way I can't remember it's electric seats you get that this moves that moves up and down blah 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 all that stuff pretty standard um what else do you get with SE as I said all the sat nav and everything is is standard so 
with SC, I think even with the S version. So you go S, SC, and then HSC. And then within that, you can spec it with R Dynamic or not. So you can actually run around, you can actually drive around with a HSC without R Dynamic, which I think in my opinion is a bit silly. If you're gonna spec out HSC, you might as well put the R Dynamic on it as well, because with R Dynamic, right there you get tread plates. You get these copper accents here, which run across the car, which looks really nice. In there as well, you get that on there. Also, you get a different front. I haven't actually shown the front of the car yet. So yeah, that's the front. So the aerodynamic, you get these copper, they're not actually copper, they're just like colored copper. I think they're just plastic. Um, you get those copper accents, different grill at the bottom there. As you can see, it's like a mesh thing. I don't think the grill's different. I think the grill's the same on every single car, unless you go for the black pack, I think which I refrain from going for because I do like these. If you go for the black pack, these actually change the black. Get a little badge down there, R-Dynamic. Also another thing you get with R-Dynamic is this roof spoiler thing at the back, which is really, really cool, I think. And it has like little vents slots up there. So from the top, no one's gonna see this anyway because it's such a big car. It looks quite cool up there. Um, that's pretty much it just to run down the spec come on come on that's it if you look at the options list it's it was only about two thousand pounds spec actually i lie it's four thousand pounds spec because of the wheels are two grand all adds up to about four thousand pounds spec on it so as you take into account with the range rover if you put that into perspective with other cars it is expensive spec for the cars. say if you spec a mini you put four grand on the mini that's expensive um, but with the price of the car, it kind of evens it out. And with all the other stuff you get as well, with the SE and stuff, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, with Audis, you can spend eight, nine grand um, on the spec because you can't, you don't even get a sat nav standard in, in Audis at the moment. So, yeah. Okay, so, more stuff on ownership. I mean, practicality. Okay, so, with the doors, they're absolutely huge. Look how thick that is. Insanely thick doors. You can open this, right? No matter how many cyclists drive through there or come through the other side, you will not see any dents. I mean, look at that, it's huge. I mean, really sturdy stuff. You've got a mantelpiece here to put your trophies on. Uh, you can fit a small child in there. You also got a little cubby hole there, which is nice actually. I'll, I'll bring you around here. So what I normally do, I'll put my key in there and my wallet. So wallet and key go in there and then just all crap in there, receipts and stuff. Um, so it's really like you get like it's, it's a lot of space you get in this car um, to put to put your rubbish um, as we go inside as you see here got my phone in this little box cubby I don't know what that's for for like a box milk carton or something this water and then if you press your Land Rover button like that you get another um, cup holder there which is pretty good so my setup is phone in there fits perfectly for the 10s Max <laughs> like absolutely but like no like I think they generally made it for this phone you literally slot it in like that and it just sits there. Keys and wallet there, crap and other stuff. And then water, and then you can put your Starbucks coffee in there. So it's all pretty good. Same with the back as well. Bring you around, same thing again. Put a small child or a dog in there. Little cup holder, not cup holder, little cubby hole there. And what else is in the back? I've kept this on, as you'd notice from my collection video and my spec video. I haven't even taken it off. That's that's just gonna, it's gonna be on there till I sell it. <coughs> D240 is a two liter V4, 236 brake horsepower, two liter, not to 60, about 6.9, seven seconds. So it's not the fastest car in the world, uh, but it is punchy. It's got about 500 newton meters of torque or 450. Of, I, think, yeah, I think it might be actually 500. 500 newton meters of torque, which is more than I had in my RS3. So, but bearing in mind it's a heavy car, but that is a lot of torque. I mean, when you get on the slip road, go on the motorway, M4, bop, 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 you're bombing down there. You Foot down, if you've got it in dynamic mode, this thing flies, this thing actually flies. Yeah, there's no kind of lag there, um, which is surprising for, for a car this big. So if you want to be, I'd say economical, I, I am going to do a running cost video of this as well. As in the fuel, how much the fuel cost, the liters of the tank, the tires, how much the tires cost, the servicing, um, all that stuff, insurance will be in a separate video but for now i'm just going to say the d240 is probably best for someone if they want the car a little bit fast and they're looking for more economical if you go for the v6 the d300 um you are going to get a little bit faster but not that much to be fair and your, your economic your empathy is going to go down as well 
because it's a higher engine, but you don't get too much out of it. I mean, the D300 is about 290 brake horsepower or something. It might actually be 300, but um, it's not that much of a gain. And it costs four grand more for the next option, for the next engine option. So yeah, DT40 is like a sweet, sweet spot. If you go, if you go for the D180, um, that'll be slow. I mean, MPG probably the same. I get about 32 to 34 on long drives. Around town, it's not that great because you've got so much torque in the car, the car has to keep going, has to keep moving, moving off traffic lights and stuff like this in traffic. Um, then you just waste all your fuel. But on long journeys, it's pretty good. Yeah, back to the D180, that would be, I don't know, it'd be too kind of slow for the, in the Evogue, um, in the smaller Range Rovers, fine. Um, because it's, you know, it's lighter and stuff. But this, I think if you go 180, it's a bit too slow. Um, you will get a good MPG, but then again, will you? Not sure. I mean, all the figures now are just a load of rubbish, aren't they? Um, you gotta actually drive the car and see how much you actually get. Don't buy a car based on its MPG because it's never gonna be the, the exact thing they put on the, on the, um, the brochure. Right, let's have a look at the boot then. Key in hand. So it's like sensors under here, so if you wave your foot, it should open. There we go. <laughs> oh, right. It's a bit temperamental, I must admit. Normally all these things with the boots, though they are. It doesn't matter what car you buy. There we go. Yeah, in the owner's manual, there is actually uh, a photo telling you actually where the sensor is. I don't know. I can't remember where it about is, but it's kind of on the corner of the side, of the, both sides of the boot. So boot size then, not too bad. I mean, it's, it's obviously huge because it's a four by four. Got one of these things, which you can pull back and forth, push it back if you want to put taller items in. 12 volt socket for, I don't know, for your dog to charge his phone or something like that. Don't know what that is. Um, yeah, the, the thing split 60, 40. So um, yeah, so you can put your skis in, whatever, your, your canoe and that in there. Pretty easy though. So I'm gonna get in. Right, as you see, the sun blind is closed at the moment. I'm not gonna turn the engine, I'm just gonna do the ignition. Right, so ignition on. Your screen should come forward. Actually, I might have to put this on. Okay, there we go. So the the um, sun blind is going back now. Okay, so that's done. So now you now you're halfway to London. Um, once that's gone, you get your nice light in here, which is quite nice actually. You get a nice atmosphere. Um, I do recommend going for the sunroof. Let me just turn that off so it's not annoying. Okay, so infotainment then. What can I say about this? I mean, I mean, it's good. So you've got your phone connectivity and all that. Sat nav, phone, climate control, vehicle settings where you can go eco mode, dynamic mode, comfort mode, and you can also there's a snow and gravel mode, mud ruts, and it should be sand at the end. Sand program. Um, what this does, I mean. It's good because I expect the adaptive dynamics as well, which makes the car a little bit tighter around corners and stuff like that, um, which does help this program as well, but well, all of them. If you do opt for the, the um, air suspension, um, it does a little bit more in these modes. Right now, the only mode I can tell the difference is, is when I put it in dynamic from comfort and when I put it in sand mode from comfort mode. Um, me and my mate on the motorway, I mean, there's traffic, it won't go fast. It was like 20 miles an hour. Well, the most way is traffic. He put it in sand mode and my car literally went <coughs> like that. Um, so sand mode obviously does that. So, but there ain't no sand around here. So I probably won't be using that mode. The mode I'm using the most is either comfort or eco mode. Now eco mode is okay. I mean, there is a lot of lag on the um, throttle. I mean, it doesn't really do anything when you put it down. So that's eco mode. Um, it does save you MPG as well, which, but it's kind of annoying to drive with because the car doesn't really go anywhere when you put the foot down, um, and you can't really get you know get up and go. So comfort mode, I mean, you, you will return good MPG in that anyway. Um, dynamic mode, as I already said, as I mentioned, it's good. Um, as I say, when you're going high speed, like 50, 60, you put your foot down, it does not lag. There's no kind of second where it kind of falls back. It just goes when you put your foot down you can feel the car going like that it's, the torque is there which is really good and in the rev range i mean obviously if you're high revs if you're three four thousand it's not gonna do much but the two thousand 
RPM, even there you get a lot of torque. So it's good. And torque from the low end, I think it's about, it comes in about 1500, which is, which is quite good. I might stress the fact that when you're, let me talk about this first, on your media, okay? So, go ahead, Sharon playing. You pick your phone. Now, I don't use a cable because, I don't know, I just never have. Okay. The, only, the, only, the only reason I'd use the cable is my, if my phone's out of battery, I need to charge it while I'm driving. Um, but this phone has good battery, as you guys know. Um, so I'd never need to plug the cable in, and I think it's just a faff. I mean, getting in and out of the car, you have to go in there and take it out and all this. I just like to have my phone there. If you connect your phone, you'll get your media up. You get your songs up. You can only change them back and forth. You can't select for a playlist on the Bluetooth. You'd have to go into Apple Music or Spotify and press shuffle play or actually hold your phone and choose the song. But with the cable in, obviously you can choose your playlist and stuff like that. But with the Bluetooth, you can't do that, which is a bit annoying. But out with Audi, you can actually go in and change your playlists um, if it's just with Bluetooth. Now with Bluetooth, if you guys are on Apple Music, don't, don't use it over Bluetooth. You've got to plug it in. Reason being, with Apple Music, it cuts out. Every time I drive and I choose Apple Music, I play this on my Apple Music, because I use Apple Music and Spotify. With my Apple Music, no matter how long the drive is or whatever, it cuts out. And what I mean by that, it, it just, the music stops playing and the little, the timeline keeps going, but there's no sound. And on the phone, it's like stopped. And then when I press play, it plays through the phone. So it's actually cut out, but it keeps my phone name there and my kind of contacts and everything. I can still call people through the through the car, but the music just stops. On Spotify, no problem at all. It works perfectly through the Bluetooth. So if you guys are like me and just don't want to plug it in and you use Spotify, great, you're going to be fine. But if you if you use Apple Music, you have to plug in your phone because it will not work with this car. Every journey, it is cut off. It's really frustrating. So that's that. That's one kind of thing to to take down a note. Right. Let me actually. Take this here. <clears throat> Infotainment then. So let me talk about the front screen. This is navigation. Now, <laughs> let me talk about this. So, always on Land Rovers or Range Rovers, the navigation was absolutely terrible. So bad, it was garbage, rubbish, always to the point you cannot use it. With this one, it's a major, major upgrade, but still, um, I was with my mates yesterday and we were going to this restaurant. So let me draw it out here, okay? So there was a turning right, yeah, like this. It was right. The sat nav was taking me like that, obviously to turn right, but there was a little road here going like this, kind of cutting the corner off. Any other sat nav will go that way. It was just a simple road, but the Range Rover took me round that way. It's always doing these weird de detours, so you've got to be, take that into mind. Always with Land Rovers, they're doing this weird stuff. They actually don't take this straightforward route, even though there's route options you can choose, like three or four it gives you on the little menu. Always it takes you weird detours, and you like, even, it's like if, when you know the road, when you know where you're going, um, and just put the sat-nav in, just to see if you've got one of these cars, it will literally take you just the completely opposite direction. It will still get you to the destination, but it will just take you there the weirdest way possible. So keep that in mind if you want to buy one of these. Um, so let me just put in London then. So the touchscreen is okay. It's not as good as like an Apple phone. Press enter. It will search. You can put in postcodes of this as well. So it's found London. It's quite cool because I've got a data sim in here, which you get with a 19 model year Velars, um, which gives you kind of two gig per month you can use um, with Google Maps and it can show you the weather and stuff and news updates, which is quite cool. So it's got this cool little thing going on. Well, you can actually touch it. That's cool. I didn't know you can do that. That's quite responsive, actually. That's 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 surprising. That's very surprising. So it's got London. You can go route options. I don't think it's given me another one. Oh yeah, it has actually. So you can choose them. So it says best for now, um, nine minutes longer, ten minutes longer. But you know, you can choose one, and then you press start. Okay, let's count how many seconds. Start. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five seconds. That's very slow. On other cars, it'll go straight in. So it is a bit kind of laggy. It does take its time, you know, with the buttons. You know, as you see there, it's got all these things, you know, normal stuff like suggestions, um, landmarks and stuff like that. So it shows you all the fuel prices as well, which is quite cool. You know, it, it takes a while. It takes a while. I think they still need to, to fiddle about with this to make it kind of perfect. I mean, Land Rover, you're not going to get, is renowned for their sat-nav being 
awful so right so next one is phone normal stuff you can go contacts whatever blah blah and on the right on the left hand side you can change this by the way you don't have to have that on the left hand side so what i've got is weather here which is quite cool so in the area of Thatcham, which are we are currently in it is nine degrees partly sunny um okay so that's that you can scroll like this um you've got traffic updates on here so if you look on here and when you're driving just any other road um it will tell you kind of what the traffic is and stuff and it would actually tell you the road as we are not on the road right now it says unknown road so you've got my phone there and you've got my music there and you've got news so here we go here's some news so you can toggle a few diff different news and stuff kangaroos and wallabies went around in australia 125 million years ago for the shape of its tour which resembles the hull of a galleon ship and for paleontologist Doris Sigitz Willers, who has studied fossils in the member of the large family called ornithopods. Bless. Find. Yep. There we go. You see, it's not. It, it, it's a bit kind of. You know, slow. It's still slow. I mean, when you're driving doing this, you would press the buttons you don't want to press and you'll get annoyed. So, mainly, I just have my phone which is playing, which is cool. I don't mess about with kind of anything else. If I'm going to somewhere that I don't know, I'll use the sat nav, obviously. Um, but yeah, that's the amount of stuff. That's kind of the limit to where I would mess about with this stuff. Um, I'm not, you know, as they, as they advertise, it's, it's so kind of technological and all this stuff. It's, you know, it, it's okay. I would say it's okay. Settings. So here you can um, pull the screen. Okay. Um, Right, I think it timed out then. If you do leave it on without the ignition on it, it will go off. So that's that. It wasn't a fault, by the way. Um, where were we? Settings. Um, you see, it does stuff like that, and then there's no... Where are... Okay, there we go. So you can put the screen back. Back. Yeah, yeah. Press, please. Like this. Or forward. And you can have dark or white. I like the dark because it kind of blends in with this down here, which is quite nice. Um, and then other stuff you can mess about with brightness and blah, blah, blah. All that, home. So on my home, I've got navigation here. I've got media and then I've got my phone. Swipe across, you've got eco data. Well, oh, actually, I lie. I don't just use the sat nav and the phone. I use this. This is, this is basically my screen the whole time. So this will tell you how many miles you've done in the journey, um, how long it took you and the average MPG. And it will come up here, um, numbers out mm, numbers out of five on whether you're, how good you're doing on the mpg and around here it would display um a percentage like 70 percent green and stuff like that history you can see all your mpg here so as you can see i'm averaging around 30 this was a one-off i think i kept it neutral the whole way down a big hill once um, and i've got about 50 mpg there but that's not realistic as i said home you got eco data, you got cameras, which is my review camera. You got web browser, which I never use. Uh, I think that's news. Voice command, I never use it. In control apps, pfft, not really any point. I have my phone fixed to the car anyway. I don't really need to do it through Spotify through this. It just makes it more laggy and kind of more slow. Um, valet mode is is quite cool uh, if you're rich. So what you can do, you can you can actually make a code and put it in valet mode and then give it to your person who's going to park the car for you um, and they can't access any of this so all they'll get is the kind of um, climate stuff and able to change gear and then you can put the pin code in and then it will unlock all your stuff bluetooth ambient lighting this was an extra of 200 pounds it should be standard in my opinion um so all different colors got blue which is under you can't really see it it's under there Oh yeah, you can see that. 4x4i is again to do with the... Come on. Ah, Jesus Christ. Off-road information. So it will display, you know, if you're going off-road, it will display your suspension and stuff like this. And what the... Can I not press this? No? Obviously, I haven't played with this, as you can see. Okay, like stuff like that. Compass, yeah, that's pretty cool. 
yeah, as you can tell, I do not <laughs> touch this stuff. Um, and then again, I do, uh, I do plan on taking this kind of, I say off-roading, but kind of more, it's more road trips. So I, I do plan on taking this on. Um, so that's 4x4i, just gives you information on all that stuff. Vehicle dimensions, which is quite good. If you go into the car park, um, and if you don't know your vehicle kind of height, it will tell you straight up right here, and the width, depth, all those things. And you can change it to meters, feet, and whatever, which is quite handy, actually. That's quite good. Jesus, there's so much, this is gonna be like 50 minutes long. So in the screen in front of me, I've got it set up. So the rev counter and the speed is in the middle, a bit like on the Audis as well. I had the R3, you can put the thing in the middle. On the right hand side, I'd like to see my MPG and what miles I've done this month. Um, and then your fuel there and the average MPG, uh, not MPG, uh, MPH is there. 31, which is an averaging for March so far. It's not bad. I mean, pfft, it's okay. You're gonna get about three, 350 miles out of the tank. 350, 400 if you're lucky. And on the left hand side, you will have music. You can change all this with this menu button here. So press menu. You've got all this stuff in here, driver's assistance. You can change, you can even change the indicators to be wavy, like left to right, or just flash, which is quite cool. Um, speed limit awareness, all this stuff you can choose and set up. Display, so yeah, left info panel, I can have as media, which I've got. I've got it as one dial, two dial. You can have the whole map on here, but I'll show you that actually, it's quite cool. Um, there we go, which is awesome. And then you still have got your, your fuel left, your MPH, and your miles there. I mean, that just looks sick. Looks like a TV in there. Parking with this car, um, probably you guys are suspecting me to say something about parking being an ownership review. Parking that you do have to choose your spaces carefully. You do have to choose them. I mean, you can't just wing in a car park and just bung it anyway. You have to choose them with this car. I mean, and with these wheels as well, you have to be so careful not curbing it. Um, going into McAdee's drive through I am guilty. I've curbed it into McAdee's drive through um, The car is, I mean, the main thing, I think, is the bonnet. Is Because it's so long, it's intimidating up there. You think you don't know where you are up there. But overall, it's not that big. I mean, in, in a car parking space, you're going to have at least like two or three inches before the line hits on your wheels. So it's not that bad. Um, I think it's about six foot wide. Yeah. You see on the dimensions things, I think I showed you that. It's not as big as you would think. Um, driving this car on the road, it's not as big as you think. I mean, if, if you're like a single track road, there's another car coming, you can pull in and it'll be kind of the same as like a, I don't know, an average sized kind of saloon car or, you know, a crossover car. It's not huge. I mean, Range Rover Sport and then Vogue, that's when you get big up there. Um, those are big cars. Um, but yeah, do be cautious when you go into like a car park. If you are thinking about buying these cars, um, and if you're notorious for curbing your wheels, do keep the standard 20 inch wheels if you go for the SE or any car you go on, do <laughs> keep the standard, Make the, choose nice ones, but don't go full out on the 22s because they are quite low. I mean, being Pirelli tires and like huge, they are huge thick tires, but they are still massive rims. Um, yeah, and I am guilty to curbing one or two. So yeah, if you're notorious for curbing it, do kind of go down a size. 21 or 22 they even do 18s on this but they, don't, they look absolutely disgusting do not go for 18 inch wheels on the car like this um so 20s are nice 21s 22s i mean they look sick but you have to be careful about you know the curbs out there especially in these these car parks <clears throat> you get around here in the uk and potholes as well because they're low profile you have to be careful you can't just kind of waft over because it's a 4x4 you can't waft over bumps if you've got these wheels on it you have to do be you have to be cautious but yeah do pick your car parking spaces carefully um if you get i mean these doors they're not as bad as as the tts i had because they're not long they are quite you know short they're like average size saloon car doors um but they are really thick as i said um just be careful of not dinging other people's cars and stuff um yes that's it on parking i guess the lights are matrix lights ah okay let me talk about this as an ownership review let me talk about this okay we're probably about 25 minutes in, but let me talk about this. Matrix lights, so on the SC you get matrix lights. What that means, you get high beam assist, so when a car comes, the beam dips. But with these, the whole beam doesn't dip. Only where the car is, the section of where the light is, it, it goes off. And the rest of the lights stay full beam, okay? It's good, it works, but when it's pelting it down with rain, sometimes the lights don't register where a car is because, I don't know, it gets confused with the rain, so the beams don't go off. 
Now, when I'm following someone behind, it puts the car in like a tunnel of darkness and there's beams either side it. As I said, it cuts out the light in the middle or where the light is from the other car. So people think I've still got my beams on. And when a car comes towards me, even though the, the beams are dipped for them, for their lights, and the other beams are still on, on the like, left side of the car, um, they still think I've got my beams on and then they flash me. I mean, pretty much every time when I drive at night, I get flashed at least once or twice. This is every single time I drive at night. It's pretty much every day now because you know it's winter here in the UK. So every single time I drive at night, I get flashed every time. It's so annoying. Even when my even when my full beam is dipped, and I don't have the um, high beam assist on, where it messes about with the panels of the lights, people still flash me, and it's it's getting really annoying. I know this car's high and stuff but with the lights people just get really really pissed off with it um i've had many every week yeah every week i get this people pull over to the left and let me go past and then i see them in remove view camera they pull out and get that just so basically they're just pulling over because they don't want to see my lights in their rear view mirror even though my full bay full bay <laughs> full but yeah this is my full bay even though my full beam is dipped every single time it's getting a little bit on my nerves i don't know how to fix it i mean the, the, be the best way to do it is just keep your full beam off and just do it manually. You know, flip up the full beam um, when a car has gone past. Um, but still, I get flashed with that. So, yeah, that's a good thing to, to note with this. If you don't mind people kind of getting angry and pulling over, um, I've had one woman actually pull over and <laughs> wind down her window and actually shut. I was kind of two cars behind her I wasn't tailgating her at all she pulls down a window why the F are you tailgating me I was just oh my I'm not I'm absolutely not but yeah that that's what they think with these lights because they're so bright they think you know I'm right up their ass uh, which is a bit annoying but you know it'll change now because obviously it's getting lighter in the evening and stuff until about eight nine o'clock here in the UK when it's summertime but when it's winter time you're gonna have a problem with people keep flashing you and pulling over and letting you go past so that's a good thing to know from an ownership review car journalists won't say that do you know what i mean this is an ownership review okay cool right that's pretty much it though i don't think there's anything else i've pretty drained out an in-depth kind of talk on this so much um yeah i mean the car i mean i love the car i mean it probably seems a bit moany but i do love the car it's awesome four by four vibe it's really cool being up high um it's comfortable the seats are really soft it's you know it's good leather inside alcantara is nice to touch it's a good ride it'll go for days i know i know people say land rovers aren't kind of reliable but i have actually had no problems apart from the infotainment being a bit glitchy a few times but apart from that the whole car as in engine tires wheels nothing's wrong with it um, for six months i haven't noticed anything um i know land rovers are reliable for, for breaking down but i have not literally had anything wrong with this car the only thing i've had to do is fill up the ads blue um but that's standard um it runs out probably seven thousand miles if you've got a diesel car and you fly a range Rover, they have ad blue now which is makes the diesel cleaner so you have to fill that up every kind of seven to eight thousand miles it's been good it's awesome i love it i mean the color scheme i think i've done pretty well with the silver the black roof and the wheels look sick kept the r dynamic and kept the copper accents as well i do like that i really like this spec and not many people i had this guy come up to me at the showroom outside when i was collecting and he said he said silver with cream seats it works because normally it's a lot of spec if you spec silver you go dark inside but as you can see obviously i've done the cream and it actually works really well so i thought the black seats would be a bit boring um and i do like the two-tone with the alcantara or suede stuff yeah but this is just my kind of ownership review i guess there is um, annoying points, but they're not, they're not really, really bad points. Um, they're just little nags, do you know what I mean? The car is absolutely fantastic. I do, I do really, really like it. I'm um, not sure how long I'm gonna keep it. Um, I'm renowned for kind of changing my cars quite re uh, um, regularly, so I'm not sure about this one. It's going well. There's no, there's nothing, there's no reason for me to change it. Um, it's been good, as I said. It's awesome. So yeah, after this um, video has gone up, I'll probably think about making a running cost video. So I'll dive into actual costs down to the pence of what this car actually costs to run it. Petrol, tyres, how much are they? And all that stuff with the insurance. Uh, also, if you do want a finance video, I'm interested in making a finance video of, you know, how to buy these cars on finance and stuff like that. So 
If you do want all those, comment down below. This is probably 30 minutes long, but yeah. <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the insight of this stuff. Um, the car stuff hasn't been, it's not kind of what I do on my channel. It's only been recently I've, I've kind of done this stuff on my channel it's, and it's doing quite well. So I, uh, guys, I really do appreciate you watching these videos and you know, these topics. So, so yeah, give this video a like guys and go watch the collection as well and the other spec video. I basically said all the spec in this, but um, it's more in depth than the other video. Cool, all right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah, hunting on my bed, texting with the bill. Roses in my wallet and I'm flexing it for real. Racks and racks and racks, I look like rookie of the year. Fronting with the cash.